What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. Today on the show, it's always great to welcome a guest back. And Coach Richie McKay is welcome back here on the show. He's welcome back anytime, but he is the Liberty men's basketball coach. And they just clinched uh, another berth in the NCAA Big Dance Tournament, winning the Atlantic Sun Conference Championship just a few days ago. We welcome Coach McKay back. Coach, welcome to the show. Welcome back. Jason, thank you, man. Uh, you're always one of my favorite interviews, and uh, I'm glad you would have me back. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's always a good excuse, too, when you happen to just, you know, cash in another ticket to the big dance. I have to imagine it's feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, it, uh, it's hard to get there. So, and you know, you've been around it enough to, to know that process and the, the arduous road that you, you navigate in order to have a chance to cut the nets again. And especially Jason in a year like this, you know, we, I'm just really proud of our group that, uh, that we, we got the, the ticket. What has made this team so special? And I want to talk about the, the sort of weirdness, if you want to call it that of 2020, 2021, and we'll get into like what this year was like for you as a coach, but this team, what made it so special in being able to persevere through all of the different trials to, to get back to the dance? Huh, you know, I, I think, I think the neat thing about this group, Jason, is, uh, it, you know, number one, we have really good players. Like I, I don't want to uh, discount the fact that, you know, they can, they can play the game. That, that's important to any pursuit that you have relative to a championship. Yet, man, what makes this group unique is, is the, the selflessness that they have. I, I admire uh, the, the daily uh, intentionality of trying to make someone else better in our family. I, I just, I think there's a uniqueness to it, especially in a, in a day and age where we're so caught up in how a circumstance affects us. And we, we got guys that are, are really pursuing a selflessness that can influence others. I, I think it's special. I, I, I don't, we're not perfect, but I don't know if I've been around a group that uh, that embodies that pursuit more than this. Circumstances were something we all had to deal with. You guys had to deal with your own circumstances with games postponed, games canceled, uh, still being able to have a really great record and put yourself in position to win another Atlantic Sun, Atlantic Sun regular season and conference championship. Take us through this season for you as a coach and just being able to adjust. I have to imagine it's it's a year and a season I mean, certainly a year like none other, but a season for you coaching like you've never had before. Yeah, and, and our story is probably a little different. Uh, Jason, we, we had a couple of tragedies that occurred during, uh, during the season that, uh, you know, I'll take you all the way back to a year ago when we had a group that qualified for the NCAA tournament. They were 30 and four. It was a team that was predominantly all returners uh, off the year prior when we won in the NCAA tournament. And as you well know, uh, once you get to the dance, there's a nervousness that you got to get through. And our guys, they got through. So, so this team last year, they, I think they were, uh, I think they were confident that they could beat anyone. And the disappointment, we qualified on March the 8th in front of a sold out Vine Center crowd uh, against a really good Lipscomb team. And, and then March the 12th, we stood before them in the locker room and shared our, our seasons over. Now, uh, in the grand scope of things, that was that was a blip on the radar because obviously we were in the in the beginning of a global pandemic. Yeah. When we go through the summer, and then you have all the the social injustice and the inequities that that uh, came to the forefront, and uh, that really affected our group and our campus. And uh, uh, the neat thing about that is the way they rallied and they chose to use God's word in order to try and combat that, uh, and then. When they got back in June, shortly after, they returned Elijah Cuffey, uh, one of our two lone seniors. Uh, his brother passed away tragically in the evening. He was a firefighter in uh, Charleston, West Virginia, and Jason Cuffey. And uh, man, that was tough. Uh, seeing one of your, your players and one of their teammates uh, lose a loved one. We took a bus five, five and a half hours to Charleston uh, for the homegoing service. And, I was so impressed with our guys, the way they loved on Elijah, the way they sat attentively in the eulogy. And, 
uh, and celebrated his homegoing, yet had such compassion and sorrow for his loss, and, uh, and then took it back home. And there wasn't one complaint from the, our guys. Well, uh, then the testing, and we had to pause in the, the early fall, and then we lost Coach Susie's wife, Kendra, who lost her 22-month battle with cancer. She was, uh, you know, Brad's been with me for 26 years, and she is an important part of our family. So, man, you throw all that in with the, the testing, uh, the going on pause, the, the some some uh, some contracting of the virus. Uh, I'm just amazed at our guys' agility in this process, Jason. To to still take on all that and have a a deep sense of gratitude and an appreciation or a thankfulness to just play. Man, this group is inspirational. They they, they really have something different about them that I think their light shines before men. Mm. There's a lot there. Um, you talked about your guys' agility. Um, what about yours? I mean, I have to imagine there were some days where you were just like, man, I'm just tired. This is hard. Um, and trying to persevere through that. When you look back, what's the lesson or, you know, kind of the, the mindset that you can look back and think about going through what you went through as, as a leader of this team the last year um, that maybe you'll take with you for the rest of your life or you'll share whenever you get the chance to speak about what this 2020 slash 2021 year was like? Yeah, great question. I can think of one word and it's identity, uh, making sure that I had my identity in who I am rather than what I do. And, uh, and, and I also think, Jason, that when, when you trust God's word, and I heard a great quote from a really good friend of mine, he said, it's not truth that transforms us. You know, we, we understand what truth is and, uh, and, and we can even analyze it or, or do the analytics of truth, but it's trusted truth that transforms. Mm -hmm. And I think just knowing and believing God's word and what it says about me and the promises uh, that he, if you're weary, he will give you rest. That the, that the good work that he has begun in you will be faithful. Uh, he'll be faithful to see it through. And I, I just think relying on that and trusting in that uh, gave, gives me a peace. And, and then the second thing, which I know you're a huge proponent of just from the way you speak, the, what you've written, boy, just having a, uh, people in your life that you trust with your life, that you can be the authentic version of yourself yeah. and that can help you navigate tough terrain. So uh, I think those are the things that are you know daily uh, principles in, in my life that I've tried to really marinate on and, uh, and reside in. Richie McKay is joining us here on Sports Spectrum. He's the Liberty men's basketball coach, and they have another trip to the NCAA big dance. And you kind of alluded going back a year ago to what that was like having that, you know, moment taken away from your team. Um, what was that like for you kind of in those few days when you're having those conversations, you're, like I said, you, you're up there, you're cutting down the nets, you get your, your ticket punched, and then couple days later, everything is pressed on pause and then eventually canceled. Uh, what was that like for you having to have that conversation with those guys and telling them that their season was over? Yeah, I, I mean, I'd be, I'd be uh, less than forthright if I told you I wasn't disappointed yeah. when, uh, when we heard the news. I mean, this was a group that in college basketball, Jason, you know, we, Coach Bennett, Mike Bray, you hear all the best coaches say, you want to get old and stay old. And we had we had gotten old. We had four seniors that uh, that had won a lot of games for us. So yeah. the anticipation of what could be led to a great disappointment. And uh, I don't mean to live in quotes, but sometimes I do. I heard Crawford O'Ritz say, uh, emotions are great passengers, but they're horrible drivers. Yes. So that disappointment, uh, I think for me, what was really most important was to be able to share, hey, it's okay to be disappointed, and we should be because uh, of what maybe could have been, but let's not forget what we have done in, in, in the, the season that we're in. So I just tried to be positive again and look at things from a, from a biblical lens of, man, we, we get a chance to be agents of change in this. We, we get a chance to be a light, and there's bigger things than the next basketball game. Now, hard when you put so much in it, but it's really the place that uh, I think was most important for, 
for me and for people that look at our program, it was the most important thing for them to see. When you lose four seniors, you mentioned the four seniors, there's got to be some uncertainty. Hopefully, you know, your recruiting class coming in and, and some of the returnees are ready to take that step and, and, you know, move on to that next opportunity. But you're still probably a little bit uncertain. And yet now you can sit there and look back. You know, the job's not done yet. You still got a, at least one more game to play, hopefully more. Yeah. But you can look back and say, okay, these guys stepped up because you still won 23 games and an opportunity to get back to the big dance after losing some – pretty important players. So yeah. walk us through that. And maybe as a coach kind of adjusting to, you know, that aspect of having to retool. Yeah, no doubt. You, you know, we, the, when I worked with Tony Bennett at the university of Virginia, I saw him implement a blueprint that I think uh, had uh, built the last uh, uh, basis to it. And uh, one of the things I think our assistant coaches have done and coaches have done is they've done a great job recruiting number one, but, also a really good job developing. And we, we kind of had a feeling that, uh, you know, it could be a bridge year, but if things went right, maybe we could compete for a conference championship. Uh, but boy, our, our guys have really, they, they've had this, and I alluded to it at the beginning, they've had this, this pursuit about them where that we were just gonna be a part of something bigger than ourselves. And we were gonna lay aside statistics and, uh, and personal or individual goals, still have them, but not put them before the team and its success. And so, yeah, the trepidation that I had going in uh, was, was real. And, uh, but man, we've had some guys really step up. Elijah Cuffey, uh, our senior defensive player of the year has been super. Darius McGee, he's 5'8", Jason, on a good day. Um, <laughs> he's got a 47 inch vertical and, uh, and he's really got like 37 foot range. Uh, those two guys have been instrumental, but we, we've also had some, I'll call them the invisibles. Uh, Kyle Rowe, who does all the little things. It's just a Tim Tebow type type leader. And I love Tim Tebow, so can't give him a higher compliment. Yeah. Uh, and then Chris Parker, our graduate transfer, who, you know, most of the time when you have a graduate transfer for one year, he's looking for his own. Boy, he's done a great job of helping our program uh, become what it's become. And I can give you a host of others, uh, but I, I just, I'm really proud of those guys for what they've done, how they've sacrificed and the and the 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 relentless uh, pursuit they've had in trying to be a champion. When we've had you on in the past, I have asked you this question, and I'll ask it to to you again because I just think it's always changing. What was discipleship with the team this year? What did that look like as far as I mean, even for you and your fellow coaches, and maybe with the team in general? Like, what does that look like? Because I know that spiritual component is at the essence of what Liberty's about, but certainly what you as a coach is about. Yeah, it, you know, it was, it's always different. Uh, I think it's important that we try and find what Christ in us, the hope of glory is, is doing instead of maybe what we think is best. And, uh, I, you know, when the, when the, all the, when the George Floyd incident happened, there was, there was a, there was a necessity in trying to, make sure we looked at that and listened in the right manner. And I think that was the precipice behind some, what we call no cap sessions. That's their vernacular for just real talk. And boy, that opened up some doors and, uh, and some emotions that the, the vulnerability that was in the room started to, to promote even a deeper connection. And I think uh, we have a, a, a pastor, a campus pastor named Josh Rutledge, who, uh, who's outstanding. And he kind of took it from there and led some discipleship stuff. And I just think it's, you know, we, we have a foundational verse, Jason. I think you've heard me say it before. It's Ephesians 3.20. Now to who, him who is able to do, do far more than all we can ask or think according to the power at work within us. And, and I think just, again, trusting that scripture and uh, believe in God for something great, even if it's not what we thought it would look like. It's it, it's not a national championship or a Final Four, or even a Sweet Sixteen. Man, there's there's a platform. There's a there's a community. There's a campus. There's a life that we could influence by um, by by fruit worth bearing. And uh, Clark Kellogg, who you've had on, who I admire dearly, yeah. uh, I saw a tweet from him that said, "Fruit worth bearing." It was. Uh, Moral fruit, that's godly character. Relational fruit, 
um, that obviously is something that's really important to all of us, a relationship with Jesus and with one another, and then functional for pursuing excellence in what you do. And, uh, and I, we shared that with our guys. And I think that's been a, a driver for us here the last month of the season. So you mentioned that vulnerability in the guys opening up. How hard is that as a coach to get guys to open up? You've coached for a long time. Have, is this, was this year different because of the Floyd incident and everything else that was going on in our country? Or is that something that you try to cultivate every year with your guys to be vulnerable? Because it's not, it's not something you can ever force because everybody's yeah. got to be who they are. But at the same time, it really, when it happens, it opens up for, for some really cool moments with, with God and certainly with each other. Yeah. This is the reason I love coming on with you. You're the best in the business. Like you ask questions that no one else asked. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, if we're honest, Jason, we, you know, men don't really like vulnerability. You know, we, we would rather you see uh, the, the version of ourselves that we present as opposed to who we really are. And I think uh, you, can never, you, you can never give away what you don't possess. So for, for me, I think it starts um, with me and, uh, and with our coaches or the people in our program that are leaders. And I think we've got to, we got to take off the mask and we got to, you know, wisely, uh, present an atmosphere that that vulnerability is authentic. And, uh, so, so I think, yes, the, uh, the racial stuff, uh, those injustices and the exposure of them, uh, brought a heightened sense of urgency see to that uh, that that room if you will but it still takes a level of trust that and, and if you can't trust one another with your life that then you won't you won't have the depth of relationship so I, I don't know if we don't know if we've got it uh, solved but I do know man we've had some some really really healthy things going on in our family that's good he is Coach Richie McKay from Liberty, the men's basketball coach. We'll be watching you in the big dance. It'll probably look a little different, I would imagine. Right, Coach, this year? I mean, there, there's not going to be a full set of fans. And, you know, uh, you know, you weren't on, you know, you know, fans weren't rushing the court after you won last time. Uh, but it'll still be the big dance, right? That's right. We're uh, <laughs> really excited to be a part of it, man. We, again, when you get that ticket, Jason, it's, uh, there's a sense of accomplishment that is really rewarding, so blessed to have the opportunity to, to play and uh and let's just see how we go let's just see that's right all the best to you coach congratulations and thanks for always coming back on the show we really do appreciate it always good to talk to you good time jason thank you so much for what you do man you're uh, you're a bright light appreciate it